guys, it's Natalie and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. So I've gotten a lot of comments on my TikTok recently where people are telling me that I don't read the typical book talk books. I know a lot of book talkers will stick to the more popular books, I guess. But I've always been the kind of person where I will read any book of any genre, of any age level, as long as it sounds interesting to me. So in a given month, I might read adult literary fiction, I'll read nonfiction, I'll read a middle grade book, I'll read YA fantasy. I really just read anything that sounds interesting to me. So that kind of gave me an idea for a reading vlog. So for a week, I read only hyped book talk books. Let's go over the books I picked. So first up, I have Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I wanted to choose this book for a couple of reasons. First off being that it is one of the oldest books on my Goodreads TBR. I also chose this book because it is one of the most popular, well-talked about books on BookTok. And just to give you some stats, on Goodreads, this book has 1,166,363 ratings with an average star rating of 4.23 out of 5 stars, which is just an astronomically high average rating and high amount of ratings as well. This book also got adapted into a drama miniseries on Amazon Prime this year in 2023, which I've been intrigued to watch, so naturally I wanted to read the book first. So that's the first one that I picked. Up next, I picked a book that has arguably more hype to Daisy Jones and the Six, and that is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This book is probably in 90% of the book recommendation videos that I see on BookTok. So this one has less overall ratings than Daisy Jones and the Six at 658,848 ratings, but it does have a higher star rating average at 4.34 out of 5 stars. So yeah, like I said, I chose this one mostly because it is one of the most hyped books on BookTok, but also because I'm just a really big fan of mysteries, so I feel like this one is just a perfect pick. So the last book I picked to read for this vlog is Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. Not only is this book super duper hyped on romance book talk, but also I'm participating in the 2023 Buzz Wordathon reading challenge hosted by Kayla over at Books and Lala. I'll go ahead and link her channel down below. But basically every month there is a prompt or a word that you have to fill and meet that prompt. And this month in June, the prompt is to read a book with the word other in the title and this one meets that criteria. So this one actually has even less ratings than A Good Girl's Guide to Murder on Goodreads, and it has 385,258 ratings. And the star rating for this one is 4.32 stars out of 5. I've read a couple other Christina Lauren books and really enjoyed them, so I thought that I would give this one a go, especially because it is so popular. This one's also a second chance romance, which I haven't read a lot of those before, so I kind of wanted to see how I felt about the trope. So those are the three books I ended up picking. I wanted to do this video mostly because I think it would be fun to challenge myself to read super hyped books just for a week because typically I'm the kind of person who shies away from reading hyped books because there is so much hype that I'm afraid of disappointment. So I typically avoid hyped books altogether for a very long amount of time until I finally get over myself and read one of them. So I thought this would be a really fun way to challenge myself and try something different and maybe along the way I would find a couple of new favorite books. So without further ado, read with me for a week where I'm only reading hyped book talk books. So I'm actually currently getting ready to go to a river day with my friends and I want to start one of these books just reading by the river in the nice warm June sun. And the book I think I'm going to start with is Daisy Jones and the Six just because I have had this one on my TBR for such a long time and I think it's finally time to read it. I'm actually in the middle of two other books right now but I'm going to interrupt my regularly scheduled programming for this vlog but I'm listening to Wild by Cheryl Strayed on audiobook right now, and then physically I'm reading Lady Tan's Circle of Women by Lisa C. So this book was actually gifted to me by Scribner. This book comes out in just a couple of days, so I'm going to read and review it before, I believe it's the fifth or sixth this one comes out. So yeah, like I said, I'm in the middle of two different books right now, but this vlog is a little bit of a special occasion, so I think it's okay to take a break. So yeah, like I said, I'm currently getting ready to go to a river day. It's finally warming up here in Maryland. My boyfriend just went out and got a bunch of floaties and a cooler, and it's going to be so much fun. I'm so excited to just be mildly drunk, floating down the river, reading a book, eating some fresh fruit. That's literally all I've wanted all winter long. I feel like winter was really hard for me depression wise so now that it's warmer outside I feel like I'm finally coming out of my shell. It's been such a long time since I've done 
a reading vlog so i honestly have no idea what to talk about but i hope you guys enjoy watching videos like this if you do let me know down below and i'll definitely make more reading vlogs because i feel like the only videos i've been posting are like tbrs wrap-ups and then book hauls and unhauls and i kind of want to like switch it up a little bit so that's why we're doing something different today i'm really hoping that i catch a little bit of a tan today because i've been pale my entire life and i've never had any like real desire to like be tan i guess but I don't know why this year I feel really like different about it and I feel like I want to see how I look tan just like you know just I'm just curious so maybe next time you see me I'll be a little bit tanner much when i was at the river because we were just drinking having a good time uh i did read a couple pages of daisy jones and the six so far the writing seems very similar to the seven husbands of Evelyn hugo so i'm really excited to see how the book is going to turn out totally random change of events but my friends are going to a pierce the veil concert and asked if we wanted to go so i bought last minute tickets with my boyfriend and we're about to go see pierce the veil so I had to put on an all black like emo outfit. So this is kind of what I'm working with is like this top and then some fishnets and some black shorts. And then I think I'm going to put on some black like combat boots to go with it. I'm going to be honest, I haven't listened to Pierce the Veil since high school. So I don't know any of their new songs. Maybe I'll know a few of the throwbacks, but I'm going purely for vibes only. No matter what, I'm going to have fun and that's what matters. I know tomorrow I'm definitely going to get a lot of reading done because I'm mostly just going to be recovering from tonight, so I'll get plenty of reading done. Alright, so here's the pigtails. I think the pigtails look cute. I'm excited. It's going to be fun. I just got home from Pierce the Veil. I will update you guys tomorrow on my reading. I did not film at all yesterday and that's totally okay. Yesterday was spent recovering after all the things that I did on Saturday between going out to the river and then going to a concert. I just needed like a little TLC R&R &R day. Also, please ignore this behind me. These decorations are from my fantasy book theme birthday party. So just ignore that. So yesterday I actually finished Lady Tan Circle of Women which freed me up to read more of Daisy Jones and the Six. So I managed to read 43 pages of Daisy Jones and the Six yesterday. Also, if you somehow missed the hype train for Daisy Jones and the Six, it's basically about this fictitious rock band called Daisy Jones and the Six. I wasn't expecting the writing to be like this at all. It's very like collected interviews kind of style, which isn't objectively bad. I really like mixed media and books, but for some reason I just wasn't expecting it at all with this. And I'm not sure if I've ever read a book that takes place during the 60s or 70s, but it's been really interesting so far. So I have to make breakfast and then handle some things for my social media management client, and then I will do some reading. All right, I still haven't read my book yet, but Connor decided that it was outside ice cream time. So we're gonna eat some ice cream and enjoy our spring garden, but we're gonna enjoy some ice cream in the sunshine. All right, so I finally have time to read now. So I'm gonna dip back into Daisy Jones and the Six before I make lunch and before I work out. Let's read. Okay, so I got to page 76, so I read about 30-ish pages but so far I'm really enjoying this. I really like the interview style. I didn't think I was going to like it but I really do and I'm not super far into it where I can form like a really big opinion on it so far but I have really been enjoying it. So many hours have passed. I did not do a lot of filming. I made dinner, ate dinner, I worked out, I edited a ton of content for myself and for my social media client. And then as you saw from my time lapse that I managed to read a good amount of Daisy Jones and the Six. I think last time we left off, I was around page 70 and I just finished off at about page 155. I just finished logging my reading progress and I read 112 pages of Daisy Jones and the Six today. So this is about how far I am through it. I think I'm about 40% through the book so far. So far, I'm really enjoying this. 
this it's honestly flying by so quickly it's very fast paced the two characters with the most focus are billy and daisy and i honestly thought it would be like roles reverse i kind of thought that the whole time billy was going to be like the really messy one who's getting tangled up with daisy who has a heart of gold and can do no wrong and she's just really talented but it's kind of the other way around and billy's trying to like get his life together and start a family and daisy's kind of just like going off the deep end i kind of feel like she's a manic pixie dream girl of the 70s and for some reason i just like wasn't expecting that at all i know she's supposed to be like an enigma of a person but somehow i was still expecting her to be more like put together i guess but then again what can i expect from rock stars heavily using drugs in the 60s and 70s. I think it's time for me to go to bed, so I'm going to continue reading this tomorrow. Hello, it is a new day, which means another day of reading ahead. So I have not filmed really all morning because I didn't get to read it all. I was posting some stuff for my social media client. I was eating and making breakfast. I did some laundry. I took a shower. And now I finally have some time to read, so I'm going to pop back into Daisy Jones and the Six. I just read about 37 pages. I'm on page 192, so almost 200 pages in. So I will update you when I read again. So today I read a total of 110 pages of Daisy Jones and the Six, which is just two less than yesterday. So I'm making really good progress. I'm about 70% of the way through. I'm on page 265, I believe. And I definitely think I'll be able to finish this tomorrow. But yeah, so I don't have like a super solid opinion on it yet. Like I said, I think it's good, but I just don't think it's like amazing yet. But anyways, it's currently past my bedtime again. It's about midnight so i'm going to get to bed and then i will update you guys tomorrow when i read more of the book hello it's been a couple days it's been a little bit crazy over here in maryland as the canadian wildfire smoke has swept south so i was inside for several days as we were advised to not leave our homes because the air quality was that dangerous but while i was inside I managed to finish reading Daisy Jones and the Six. So my final rating is 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really, really enjoyed this. I think the setting was just absolutely perfect. And as someone who loves the 70s era, I really enjoyed reading this. This to me felt like a combination of the Motley Crue documentary mixed with Stevie Nicks. So I guess the big question is, is it worth the hype? And I think my answer for this one is yes. The only reason I didn't give this a full five stars is because I'm gonna be honest, I hate Daisy. I honestly think she was such an insufferable character. Her personality was like a car accident. Like it was really bad, but it's really hard to look away at the same time. And I guess I just read so many books that I have read the Manic Pixie Dream Girl trope a hundred times over and I'm so tired of it. I just feel like people shouldn't be put on a pedestal for being like manic and crazy and addicted to drugs. Her quirk was that she was a drug addict. And she was also to me incredibly selfish and very self-centered. That being said, I understand that it worked in this book because it takes place in the 70s in a rock and roll band where everyone's doing drugs. But personally, I just found myself cringing every time she was on the page, which is pretty much every page. But I think the setting and the originality of the story with the mockumentary style interview writing was very original and that's what really made me give it the rating that I did. And as usual, TGR's writing is hilarious, but also eloquently written at the same time. So yeah, like I said, my final verdict is 4.5 out of 5 stars. Didn't give it a full 5 because I didn't like Daisy, but that's okay. And I can definitely see why people love this book. So now that I finished Daisy Jones and the Six, I think my next read is going to be a Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I've already picked out my annotation tabs and I'll tell you what they mean if you're interested. Dark red means my heart just dropped into my ass. The light red means plot twist. The light gray means sad moments and the dark gray means ick moments. I would say that arguably A Good Girl's Guide to Murder has equal if not more hype to Daisy Jones and the Six just because I see this in 90% of the book talk videos that I watch. So I'm really hoping this will live up to the hype. So I'm gonna buckle down and I'm gonna start reading it and I'll let you guys know if I have any updates. Hello, it's been a few days again since I filmed just because I A, didn't feel like filming, I forgot to film, and then also I happened to really tear through A Girl's Guide to Murder. 
I finished this book in less than 72 hours. I just really flew through this. I actually absolutely loved this. I gave this five out of five stars and it was one of those books where I kind of felt from the beginning that it was gonna be a five star book. And I feel like I rarely get those anymore. This one was just so fast paced, so entertaining. I loved the characters, I loved the mystery. Honestly, I loved everything about this. I liked this book so much that once I finished it, I immediately ordered the rest of the three books in the series. So I think this one definitely does live up to the hype, for sure. Dare I say, even more than Daisy Jones and the Six. So yeah, like I said, I finished this one, gave it five out of five stars, and then I just started Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. This one is a second chance romance that I have seen all over book talk. I heard it's also kind of the kind of book that makes you cry and I don't read a lot of like gut-wrenching romances like that so I really hope I enjoy this one. So yesterday I actually read 133 pages of the book and I'm about 30% of the way through. So far I'm not sure how I feel about second chance romances so it remains to be seen what i think of this one but i really do like how macy and elliot have such a love for books i love reading characters that like reading books too because it just feels so like i guess refreshing to see yourself in a book yeah like i said i'm about 133 pages through and i'm pretty much enjoying it so far i like it i like this is very fast paced i feel because those 133 pages i read just really flew by really quickly so i'm hoping that means that i'm going to love this one. I probably am not going to be able to do too much more reading today because I am going roller skating with some friends but I might be able to squeeze in some reading time tonight before I go to bed. So yeah this is the last book of the vlog so I'm really hoping that we can finish on a strong note. I honestly have no idea how I feel about this book. Usually about halfway through a book I can tell how I'm going to rate it and I have no idea how I feel about this book and that makes me feel like it's a bad sign. <laughs> so far it hasn't really been sweeping me off my feet the way that I was expecting it to. So I'm gonna buckle down, I'm gonna read some of this and I will update you guys tomorrow. So the other day I finished Love in Other Words let's talk about it. So as I said in the last clip where I talked about this book, I wasn't really knowing how I was feeling about it. Usually when I'm halfway through a book, I can tell how I'm going to rate it. But in this book, I just kind of kept waiting for something to happen, like a big moment that would make the whole point of the book just kind of click for me. And that never really happened. So I ended up rating this book two out of five stars. Honestly, I don't think this one lives up to the hype. So first off, I found the two main characters to be just overall really insufferable. I think Macy was very self-centered and just annoying in general. And Elliot was kind of just a stereotypical indie boy who I feel like you would see at a coffee shop with a rolled up beanie and he's pretending to read Lolita. And I just thought he was really douchey. So this book has dual timelines. It goes between when they were teenagers and they were first meeting and falling in love. And then the second timeline is the future where they have a meet cute and reunite. I think for most of this book, when they're flashing back to them being teenagers, they're just like, I like you, you like me, but let's never talk about it. And it's just like so cringeworthy in my opinion. I also hated like the stupid petty jealousy that happened between them over and over again. Like it was so exhausting and so annoying to read on the page. I just don't like how they viewed each other as pieces of each other's property. It just didn't sit right with me. I also just think that the two main characters were so poor at communicating that it just made me want to throw the book across the room. By the way, there is going to be a lot of spoiler warnings in this, so just be aware of that. And then there was a part that was just totally glossed over where Elliot was seemingly date raped. The authors wrote it in a way where you can tell like it's definitely date rape, but they wrote it in a way where he cheated on Macy, which I don't know why the authors are putting guilt on Elliot and then this feeling of he's cheating on Macy when that's not the case at all. And this topic of date rape is not really discussed or explored and it's very glossed over and written off as cheating, which just didn't sit well with me at all. And I don't know why, but I just don't think that's a great plot twist in my opinion for why they stopped talking for so many years. Also when they have this meet cute in the future and they reunite, Elliot just like automatically breaks up with his current girlfriend of like a year to be with Macy even though she hasn't even confirmed that she wants to be with him which I think the author intended to be like a grand gesture but honestly it was so unrealistic and cringeworthy and it just made Elliot seem like even more of a douchebag. 
So overall, this did not live up to the hype for me at all and I was really hoping that I would enjoy it because I've read other Christina Lauren books. I think I've read a total of three or four now and I've really enjoyed their books before, but this one just did not. It didn't do what it, I wanted it to do. But yeah, so like I said, I gave this two out of five stars. Did not enjoy this. I think this should not have been anywhere near the 400 pages that it is. It was just way too drawn out for no reason. So unfortunately, in my opinion, I think this book didn't live up to the hype. So let's talk, are book talk books worth the hype? So as you know, first off, I read Daisy Jones and the Six, which is a very, very hyped book on book talk, especially with the Amazon Prime drama miniseries that came out this year. I think this was definitely good. It was doing something different. I just didn't really love some of the characters and that's okay. So my final anecdote of Daisy Jones and the Six is that I think it sort of lives up to the hype. I can't confidently say it 100% lives up to the hype, but I still did really enjoy this and I'm glad I finally read it since it's one of the oldest books that was on my TBR. As you guys know, up next I read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I can confidently 100% say that this book did live up to the hype. I think the pacing of this was perfect. I really loved the execution of the plot and how it unfolded over the course of the book. I loved our main characters. I didn't see a lot of the plot twists coming. And I finished this in a day or two, which is really record for me considering this is a 300-ish page long book. So I can confidently say, I think this one definitely lives up to the hype. And as I just discussed, I read Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren, which is one of the most hyped, I think, book talk romances. And I gotta say, this one doesn't live up to the hype. Especially as someone who's in a committed, healthy relationship, this just has red flags written all over it. If there had to be one couple from any romance book that I've read where I don't think the couple survived after the book, I think it's Macy and Elliot. So unfortunately, this one does not live up to the hype, in my opinion. So are book talk books worth it? I don't know if I can give an answer that would be sufficient to how I feel about book talk books. I've definitely read some and really, really loved them, and then I've read some and absolutely despise them. So I think at the end of the day, reading is completely subjective, and what everybody takes away from books is totally different based on the person, based on their life experiences, based on tropes they enjoy. But I think doing this video was really fun for me because, like I said, I avoid reading hyped books because I have a fear of disappointment over reading those hyped books. So reading these books kind of brought me down to earth a little bit and it made me less afraid of reading hyped books because at the end of the day, they're just books like any other books. They just tend to get talked about more online than other books. So I feel like I've definitely gotten over my fear and I don't feel as afraid to read hyped books anymore. I think this was a really fun challenge for myself and if you're the same way and you tend to shy away from hyped books, I think you should give it a try because Although I had one book that I didn't really like at all, I have two books that I can now say are pretty much favorites of mine now. And if I hadn't read them, then I wouldn't have enjoyed them and I wouldn't know that I enjoyed them. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Leave a like and subscribe down below. And let's just have a chat in the comments. Let's talk about book talk books. What are some that you liked, some that you didn't like, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, let's just have a chat in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day. Bye.